today on Be Something Wonderful, how you create reality in each moment of now. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. There was one of you that was asking me about the bridge of incidents. That how do I know, Tom, that I'm that I'm that I'm walking over the bridge of incidents? What are the signs? And, and what are the signs? Is this a sign? Also, is this a sign of the bridge of incidents? And so I want to cover that today, the bridge of incidents and the idea of signs. And also this idea that there were comments on the channel from last night's video on when you retrieve your attention or remove your attention from reality, that it vanishes. And some of you have commented, well, Tom, if I turn your video off and I take my attention off it, that means you vanish. Or if I'm working in the other room, I was working in the other room on my computer doing some work, and then I heard a crash in another room in the house, but I took my attention off that room that supposedly vanished. So what is it? Well, guys, this ties in with today's lesson on the bridge of incidents and looking for signs. So let's unpack it today like we've never unpacked it before. So here's what I wanna wanna say, is that in, in, in terms of attention, when we talk about retrieving your attention, removing your attention, we're not talking about just your 3D attention. We're not just talking about your outer attention. There is a whole world of inner attention. Some call it the inner ego, as Seth in, in his books, uh, that Jane Roberts series, right? That, so you're, if, if you hear a crash, if you're working in another room and you said that you removed your, hear this out, and you said you removed your attention from that room so it should vanish, you wouldn't have heard the crash because the room no longer exists. But the fact that you heard the crash means that you believe that that room exists, that you believe in it and that your attention was on it, your inner attention, your inner belief that it exists, your awareness. That's what we're talking about. Attention is awareness. And so the, here's the thing. You can never prove that the reality no longer exists because as soon as you go to try to prove it, you're, you're putting your attention on it. You're putting your awareness on it. Do you hear this? Right, that is the light in the refrigerator issue. As soon as you close the refrigerator, you remove your light from it. But as soon as you open up and try to prove it, that light comes back on. That's what we're talking about. The same with shutting off the video, right? Your belief, your, you trying to prove that I disappear when you shut the video off means that you're putting your attention on that reality that you want to prove that disappeared. Do you hear this? You can't prove what's not there. You can't prove a reality that you can no longer see or perceive. Wow, that's big. So let's go over this and let's talk about this idea of signs, right? Looking for signs. Neville Goddard always has been very firm about this, right? Signs follow, they don't proceed. But Lily, what's, what does, does that really mean? Let's unpack it today. I want to start with Seth and Jane Roberts. He comes out with a powerful, he or Jane Roberts, a powerful quote. He goes, you sit within the miracle of yourselves and ask for signs. Wow, that's powerful. Think about this. We're, when you're looking for signs, you're looking for something outside yourself to prove what you're manifesting within. It doesn't make sense. You can't because you're looking as the sign right? You're, you're looking at it. You're trying to look at a sign as the sign. We've talked about this, right? You can be aware of your... So what, is that, what does Seth say? You can be aware of your own greater identity. It's your inner eyes I would open. He's talking about opening your inner eyes. This is that attention within, that awareness within, right? That's what uh, Seth's talking about here. Not seeing it with the outer ego, but that inner ego, as he calls it, or that inner perception, right? You, and here's what he says. You are fascinated. Remember, we talked about being fascinated with something. Being interested in it creates it or keeps it alive in your reality. You are fascinated with physical reality. All of your attention is focused in a highly specialized way upon one shining bright point that you call reality or physical reality right? Formed by your ideas and expectations. So you, it's just because we're so fixated on this physical reality. That's why you can't let that other room go when you're in the room working. You believe it. 
You expect it to exist, and so it must exist. You're very aware of it, and your, your attention is on it, not directly by looking at it, but inner attention, right? That's what we're talking about. Same with shutting me off on the video, right? That, that, that you expect me to exist. You know I exist. You believe it, right? So, so we're so fascinated by this. That's where all our attention goes. So here, Seth hits the idea of looking for signs, that you are the miracle and we're looking outside ourselves. He talks about that we're fascinated with physical reality, that all of our attention is focused on physical reality. Hear this, supporting this brilliantly. And then, so, and then he talks about this idea that, that reality, your reality, yourself, your body is changing all the time with your thoughts, feelings, and emotions and assumptions and expectations and beliefs. Your state of being is continually changing depending on your thinking, feeling, and being. And so you're changing and your body's changing. We just don't see it because we're not, we're focused on, we believe in the continuity of it. We believe in the solidity of 3D reality. He even talks about sometimes when you, you, you might say, well, this room feels smaller, right? You might, you might, you might something, well, this feels smaller than I remember it. Well, it is smaller, but yet you go out to measure it and it still measures like the big room that you thought it was. That why? Because what you, the, even the device that you measure, it changes in that moment. It all changes to conform to your belief that it will measure the same, although it feels smaller. It is smaller when it feels smaller. You create that in every moment. But as you measure it, it's an equal measurement. Why? Because the, what you, the very device that you're measuring with changes with that new state. And, and so it will seem like it measures the same, but it's different. It's smaller because you believe it's smaller. You feel it's smaller, so it's smaller. Do you get this, guys? You, your body in the 3D world is in a constant state of change, depending on what you are thinking, feeling, believing in any now moment. Constantly changing, right? The change in the room above can't be proven, proven, <laughs> can't be proven, by measuring it, because the tools you use to measure have changed as well. Wow, <laughs> that's big. So it will appear to be the same um, width or length. It will appear to be the same measurements, but it's not. It's different. It's smaller, right? You can, however, feel these changes. That's how you do it. You feel it, right? It's your fixed belief that things change in time, in space, that also keeps you from perceiving these changes. We believe in this idea that things take time, that they take space. And so we believe in that. That's why we don't see those changes. That's not why we don't perceive them. Let's unpack this a little bit more. And so Neville got it. Let's get into this. The signs always follow, they never proceed. Hear this, when you're looking for signs of the bridge of incidents, remember, you are the bridge of incidents. You project that, you perceive that, you, you create it. So the bridge of incidents is not outside of you. That's why everything is the bridge of incidents. One of you asked me, well, what about thoughts and feelings? Are they a sign? Everything is a sign because it's all within you. But it's the mere fact that you're looking for it, it no longer becomes a sign. You create a reality of waiting for it. You create a reality of looking for it. You can't look what you can't find what you're looking for. You can't arrive what, at, at a place that you're waiting for. Right? A desire cannot come if you're waiting for it. Right? There is no objective reality outside of your consciousness. This is such a big point. Therefore, what does Neville Goddard say? Therefore, get the consciousness first and the thing is compelled to appear. You've got to get the consciousness. You can't look for the sign because it, that means you're looking for it. That means you're not in a state of consciousness. You're in a state of consciousness of looking. You're in a state of consciousness of waiting. You're in a state of consciousness where it doesn't appear yet. You hear this, right? The bridge of incidents, the fulfillment of your desire only becomes obvious after its manifestation in 3D. That's when you can only connect the dots after. They only become obvious after, right? Asking for signs can create doubt and a state of lack versus fulfillment. Just the fact that you're asking for signs, if you do ask for signs, or wanted to know if it's a sign, it indicates, implies, that you're in a state of, of the absence of your desire. You're in a state opposite of fulfillment. Do you get this, guys? This is big. So, 
Remember, you are the source of signs. Signs appear. The bridge of incidents is formed when you're not asking or looking for it. The signs appear, and the bridge of incidents is formed when you're not asking or looking for it. You just walk across it. it be, that's why fulfillment, it becomes a, when it becomes a natural state, you don't even know you're in it until after the fact. You don't even know that you've crossed that bridge, that you're living out your desire until after the fact. That's big. That's why you've got to create, because you create the inner state first. It becomes natural. It becomes real to you. So there's no difference to you between before the bridge or after the bridge. It's just fulfillment to fulfillment. And it, it feels the same. It's only after when you look around that you go, oh, wow, cool. That was the bridge of incidents. That's what we're talking about here. When, so because you are the signs in the bridge, there's nothing independent of what you are conscious of being. You are the signs. You are the bridge. There's nothing independent of you. When you are asking or looking for signs of your new reality, <laughs> for signs of your new reality of wish fulfilled, you continue to keep the old reality real. Hear this. This is the other thing. So you're not shifting. You can't shift to that new reality unless you let the old reality go. This is what Neville talked about, letting go of the old man, letting the old man die and resurrecting into your new desired state. Or what scripture talks about, not you can't put new wine in old wineskins or old bottles or old patches on new garments right? Or no, new patches <laughs> on old garments, right? New patches on old garments, right? You can only know you are manifesting the new reality when you're already in it. It becomes natural and real to you. Hear this, right? That, that's, it's a, you're, you're just chasing your tail, right? You're, you're the kitty in front of the mirror playing with its reflection, Right? It's only, you can only know you are manifesting a new reality or walking over the bridge when you're already in it, when it already becomes natural to you. Let's hit this a little bit more. You cannot, so this is what Neville says, you cannot take with you into new consciousness any part of the old man. You can't, that's why you can't take any part of the old reality. Why? If you think of the old reality, that means it exists for you. If you believe in that old reality, that means it exists for you. If you put your attention on that old reality, it means it exists for you. You can't take it with you, right? right? No one puts new wine into old wineskins or bottles or new patches on old garments. This is Mark 2.22. This is what Jesus said, right? Why? Because you are creating reality in each moment by your assumptions, your expectations, and beliefs. You're creating it in each moment. So in each moment of questioning it, in each moment of wondering about the new reality, you keep that new reality real, right? You've got, that's what letting, you got to totally let that go and move or resurrect into that new person, that new desired reality, that new version of yourself, right? Looking for or asking for signs implies, hear this, hear this, looking for or asking for signs implies a belief in the old reality. There is no reality outside your expectations, ideas, assumptions, and beliefs. You merely at, you asking for it, whether this is a sign or that's a sign, or whether this is the bridge or not the bridge, means that you believe that you're not in your new reality, that you believe you have to cross a bridge to get there, and that you're in your old reality, and that's what keeps it alive. That's big. So, it's like looking for a sign that something vanishes, a reality, when you remove your attention from it. This is what I pointed to earlier that from yesterday's video. You're looking for a sign that something vanished, right? A reality when you remove your attention from it. You can't because as soon as you look for a sign, you're saying that that reality, that, that, that you're making it a reality, right? You're making your current reality a re You're making a reality that it, that, that it, van that it doesn't vanish. <laughs> And so you can only see that reality. You hear this. You can't look for something that vanishes. It's vanished, right? There's no proof, right? The proof is within you, right? Just like the refrigerator and the light in the refrigerator. The light goes off. It's within you. It's in the refrigerator, right? As soon as you look or ask, you've created that reality. You can't find proof of that which no longer exists. That's the paradox of being an energy personality that creates by directing your consciousness. Remember, you're an energy personality. You're multidimensional. You exist in all times, in, all, in everywhere. 
and all the, uh, and, and there is no limit to you, right? So the paradox is, as an energy personality, as soon as you think of something, you put your attention on it, as soon as you ask about it, it becomes a reality, it becomes real to you, right? When you transcend your present limitations, in the old self, in the old reality, old concepts of yourself, as, as Neville says, it vanishes as you occupy your new wish fulfilled. Do you hear this? That's how you occupy your wish fulfilled. The reason why sometimes it, it's delayed or it's taking time is because you're holding on to that old state. You're holding on to that old reality. When you transcend your present limitations of doubt, fear, as, as Neville talks about, in your old self of reality, old conceptions of yourself, it vanishes as you occupy your wish fulfilled, just like that old reality, right? When you feel it within, you see it without. It's the feeling place, right? You can't get there by, by trying to look for it, by trying to struggle for it, right? So remember, waiting is resistance. Waiting is a rejection of the present moment where life happens. It all happens now in the present moment. When you're waiting for something, you can only create a state of more waiting. You can only create more things that you're waiting for. You can't see or find or have what you're waiting for or manifest what you're waiting for. Waiting is a state of being that continually creates more things to wait for. Stop waiting for it and assume it all now, right? Love security, worthiness, confidence, money, health, abundance, self-esteem, happiness, fun, joy, to be perfect. We, want, we, we wait for this. We work at this. We work to be perfect. We work to find joy. We want to be happy. We want to have more self-esteem. We want to have worthiness. We want to have confidence. We want to have security. We want to have love. We want to have money. We want to have health. But we're waiting for it, or we're working for it, or we're on a path to it, or we're trying for it when it's all yours now, when you just assume you're worthy by your God-given right, when you just decide to be confident, because confidence can't be acquired when you just decide that you are worthy. There is, a, you have high self-esteem, you have abundance, you have the health and money and joy, and that you are perfect in your own way, in your own infinite multi-being multi way. Then, you, then, then you're not waiting for anything. You assume it all and then you are it, right? There are no such things as setbacks or comebacks. You become new in every moment of now. So it doesn't matter what's happened a moment ago, because in this new moment, you're creating it all over again, right? Nothing is linear. Taking your cues from the outside world, stop taking your cues from the outside world. It's not, taking your cues from the outside world makes no sense. Nothing is linear. It's all within you. And so you're taking your cues from something that you created. Right? When you are in wish fulfilled, the imagined end, all events, people and circumstances are, are serving, are serving, are serving as the bridge of incidents to your manifested reality. Know this, that when you're occupying your wish fulfilled, when you're in your imagined end, when your attention and awareness is on what you want without the resistance of wanting it and needing it and for something to change to be it, then then everything that happens, all the people, events, and circumstances that come across are leading you, across, are the bridge of incidents, are leading you to your desire. That's what we're talking about. That's how to create reality in each moment of now. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of Higher Consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. Follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful, on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. You can visit our website at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com or you can write me anytime at info at BeSomethingWonderful.com. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, with great love and great light and, and infinite gratitude, this is Tom. See you soon.